Hello and welcome to Devil's Advocate. Have the Quattrochi revelations created a problem for the Congress party? That's one of the key issues I shall pursue today with the General Secretary of the party, Dick Vijay Singh. Mr. Singh, the revelation that your government has withdrawn the red corner notice against Atovia Quattrochi is an electoral embarrassment. Let me ask you a simple question. What justification can you have for this blatant attempt to help a man who's a fugitive from Indian justice? First of all, let me confess that I really am not a, a legal person. I don't really understand the nuances of uh, Katrochi's uh, case or the Boffer's case or the, the legality of the whole thing, red corner notice and what else. What I'm trying to say is I'm a political man I'm, and I would like to answer politically. Boffer's case has been pending since 1986-87. Successive governments have come and gone. If they had some case, why didn't they the charge it? Why didn't they, why didn't they make it public? What is there to hide? Can I interrupt? Yes. Let me tell you the facts of the case. The CBI believes that they have documentary proof given by the Swiss authorities that proves that he is a recipient of kickbacks from Bofors. He's been charge sheeted by an Indian court. There's been a warrant of arrest against him since 1997. He's been absconding no. from Indian justice. You've attempted many times to get him back. Now, you suddenly decided to throw in the towel. Why? But who has? Why, why should we be interested? Why, why should we be supporting Mr. Katrochi? I, I fail to understand. Is there a, we are interested only if there's a case against Rajiv Gandhi. Who, who, who's, why is, why is Katrochi being linked with us? But Kotrochi what has Congress got to do with Katrochi? I'll tell you why. Katrochi has been linked with you because he was a very close friend of the Gandhi family in the 80s. He's also an Italian. And there is a great suspicion that under the influence of Sonia Gandhi, the Congress party no, no, is it's, bending it's, over backwards well, to well, help a fellow well, compatriot. I, 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 you see, it's, 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 a, it's very unfair on the part of, the, of, of, of you that you are making, saying all this. Mr. Joginder Singh was a uh, CBI chief in 90, the mid 90s. After that, we had six years of NDA government. I don't remember who were the, the CBI chiefs during that period. What made them uh, not sort of uh, go ahead with this Bofors case? Let for me so answer that as well. Under the NDA, four attempts were made in Malaysian courts to extradite him. Unfortunately, on four occasions, the Malaysian courts turned it down. But after it was turned down by the Malaysian High Court and before the government could appeal in the Supreme Court, he absconded from Malaysia as well. He's now gone to Italy, where the government refuses to extradite a citizen to India. But as long as the Red Corner Notice was active, Quattrochi would have lived in mortal fear that any country he visited might have chosen to extradite him to India and you could have brought him to justice. Now, by revoking that red corner notice, that one fear that he had has gone. You've suddenly done for him what he wanted. You've made him a free man without justification. Why, why are you blaming Congress Party or the UPA government? The autonomy of the CBI is well known. We have not been interfering in this case. The, the NDA government failed to charge sheet him, failed to extradite him. Forgive me, he was charge sheeted in the 90s, long before the NDA government came into power. The arrest warrant was issued in 97 before the NDA government came into power. In fact, much of that happened when Narasimha Rao, your prime minister, was in office. So then, then why, why, why are you making allegations like I'll that? We are, we are saving him. Can I tell you why? If you look back at the Quattrochi history, just under the five years of Dr. Manmohan Singh, there are at least three instances where Congress has bent over backwards to help him. In 2004, you deliberately chose not to appeal against the Delhi High Court judgment in the Supreme Court. In 2005, you so gave evidence that, in fact, his accounts frozen in London were released to him. You even told the Crown Prosecutor in England there was no case against him. And then in 2007, when the extradition from Argentina was bungled, the government again chose not to appeal in the Argentinian High Court. There's a clear pattern, one after another, of helping Quattrochi subtly or openly. Well, Karan, I already told you that I'm not a legal person. I don't know the nuances of the, this legal framework of this case. But one thing I know, if there was a corruption charge against Rajiv Gandhi, no one has proved it. His name doesn't figure anywhere. So His name was on the charge sheet, but it was dropped after his death. 
It was as on far, the charge. As far as Kutrochi is concerned, we have nothing to do with it. Let me put the political implications. I understand you're not a legal person. Let's come to the political implications because that's something you are. You're very political. Today, as a result of your government revoking the red corner notice, tens of millions of Indians are going to be voting on the 7th and 13th of May with the suspicion in their mind that under Sonia Gandhi's influence, the government has bent over backwards, A, to bend the law to help an Italian, B, to save someone who is a fugitive from justice. Let me tell you, Karan, Boffers is a dead horse. And only people in Delhi and some people around Delhi who are very worried about this case 95, 98, 6 percent of the people in this country have nothing to do with this. They are more concerned with basic issues in this country. It's not Bofors per se that I'm talking about. What Bofors does is to bring back to life the Italian connection. It had been laid to rest, now it's returned, bang in the Karan, middle of an election, Karan, to haunt become, Sonia Karan, Gandhi. it has become a joke. Italian connection, Italian heritage, all this has become a big joke. After all, Mrs. Sonia Gandhi has proved that she has no connection whatsoever now. She is an Indian national. She is a duly elected member of the parliament. She is one political leader who gave up the prime ministership which was offered to her on a platter. But she is also the president of a party that has repeatedly bent over backwards in sly, no, subtle, I, I, or open and defined I, ways I, I, to help a man who is a fugitive from I, justice I, I, I only deny, because... I deny that, Charles. Only because that man was a close friend, one of the closest the Gandhi family had, and because he's no, no, Italian. You are being unfair. You are being unfair. Okay. Congress has nothing to do with Kutrochi. Let's come to the second aspect of this. The belief that what Kotrochi highlights is that you have converted the CBI into the handmaiden of the government. Today, look at the number of instances where it's accused of doing your bidding. The Molaim case, the Mayabati case, the Shibu Soren case, several times in the Lalu case, and most recently of all, <laughs> the title case. You're laughing, I know, yes, you're laughing. Know. But the problem is that you know that what I'm saying is God's own truth. The credibility of the CBI has been demolished. Okay, now. What happened in Mayawati's case? Has she been obliged? No. What has happened in Mulayam's case? Has he been obliged? No. No, you flipped once, 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 one over second. the last three... One, one second. Once. Let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. Number three. What has happened in Sibu Soren's case? Nothing. Absolutely. That's why. Because you bent what over backwards that? and stopped the no, CBI. You know... And look at Jagdish Taitler's case. You, you, achha, let me go back to on Shibu Soren's case. Okay. Shibu Soren case... Uh, was that uh, in which they were there was an acquittal in, uh, in Sibu Shoran's case. In, in Jagdish Taitler's case, there is no evidence. The NDA government had withdrawn the charge sheet. In Jagdish Taitler's case, there are several worrying instances. First of all, there's the belief that, in fact, the contents of what was supposed to be a secret report was leaked to Jagdish Taitler in advance. Secondly, and more importantly, there's the belief that, in fact, that report was being created to exonerate a man who you wanted to make yeah. a candidate. Karen, and yeah. in Molaim's case, just to bring that up, in the last three instances, they flip-flopped, changing their position depending upon whether you need Mulaim or you don't like Mulaim. If you need him, you're exonerating no, no, him. If you no. don't like him, you're finding him you to see, be a criminal. You see, you always forget this case of Mulaim Singh Yadav is being monitored by the Supreme Court. And which is why the manner in which the CBI has behaved has been revealed to all of us. The Supreme Court itself has turned around and accused the CBI in Mulaim's case of doing the government's bidding. They admonished the CBI in court for that. As far as we are concerned, we are absolutely clear CBI is an autonomous body and we don't interfere. But that's what you're saying. But I put it to you that if Jawaharlal Nehru was alive today, he'd be embarrassed by the party that calls itself the Congress Party and he'd be mortified no. that his granddaughter-in-law could be accused of what she's being accused of by the press no, today. I, I, first of all, I absolutely refute this charge which you've made. And I think uh, Mrs. Sonia Gandhi has been extremely straight extremely conscientious of her rights and of her duties. All right, I'll let you have the last word on that. Let's take a break. Let's come back and talk about the United Progressive Alliance. Does it still exist or has it been reduced to a fig leaf of political convenience? That's in a moment's time. See you after the break.
Welcome back to Devil's Advocate with the General Secretary of the Congress Party, the former Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh, Deek Vijay Singh. Mr. Singh, after your failure to create a seat-sharing alliance with Mulayam, Paswan and Lalu, after your failure to get them and Pawar to endorse Manmohan Singh as the Prime Ministerial candidate, and after the PMK broke with you, in what sense does the UPA still exist? There's a UPA government in Delhi. Only one, in name. One, one, one second, one second. Where Mr. Sharad Pawar is a minister, Mr. Ramvilas Paswan is a minister, and Mr. Lalu Prashad Yadho is a minister. And listen to what they say about the UPA. Listen to the fact that they question Ms. Dr. Manmohan Singh's continuation as Prime Minister. You don't have seat-sharing alliances have, they, with them? They, they, have, they have changed their uh, statement a number of times. Except that the no, last no, statement no, no. that they've taken no. is one that you and can't I, possibly like. How, how is to show that they will not change it again? All right, let me put this to you then. If they've changed their statement a number of times, then you're neither united, you're definitely not an alliance, and if you're progressing, you're progressing towards oblivion. No. You see, even UPA in 2004 was formed after the election results came in. So you're going to reform yourself? One second, let me finish. Because if you're going to reform yourself, it let, means you don't let, exist let, today. Let, let, me, let me finish. In a fractured mandate, one has to look at the possibilities. And as I've always said, politics is an art of the possible. Out of all the possibilities, if we have to form the government, we shall talk to the political parties who uh, are secular, who are anti-communal, and we will talk to them. If I read what you're saying correctly, you're suggesting that in fact the UPA does not have either the cohesiveness or the strength and you may have to now look beyond the UPA to form a government. Can you confirm that's what you're UPA, saying? UPA as a, as a united front is certainly not fighting an election as a political entity. We are fighting this election as different political parties. And after the results come in, we shall see how the results have come in, what is the mandate. And they should, we shall take a decision. So you are open to looking beyond the UPA to find fresh allies to form a government? Well, each political party in this country, whether it's ND, uh, the BJP or the Congress or the ND or the UPA, whatever, they are looking for fresh alliances. The problem you face is that repeatedly parties outside the UPA are publicly and sometimes very passionately saying, that they will not under any condition support a Congress-led government. It's been said by the left, it's been said by the TDP, it's been said by the JDS, it's been said by the AIA, DMK, and it's been said by the BJD. The problem is just when you need additional support, you're becoming untouchable like the BJP. Well, let's see. Well, let's see what? Let's see on 16th of May how untouchable we are. Okay, let me put this to you. If on the 16th of May Congress fails to cross 150, if on the 16th of May the UPA fails to cross 200, and those are very possible outcomes, in that situation, will you struggle to find fresh allies, or will you say that the time has come to protect our honor and our integrity and sit honorably in the opposition? Which will be your first inclination? All options are open. You mean sitting in opposition is an option for you? Absolutely, yes. You don't, For any political party to sit in the opposition is always an option. So you don't rule out the possibility that this election could end with Congress in opposition, not in government anymore? Not likely. But you're not ruling it out? Not likely. But you're not ruling it out? How can you rule out anything in politics? Let me put to you, if you're going to try and find fresh allies, what are you going to offer them that will entice them to overcome their hesitation, to overcome the fact that they've publicly said they won't support you, and now come around and do that? Well, all these political parties have changed their stance so many times, and they have said so many things so many times, that, the, as, as I said earlier, whatever the possibilities are at that moment, we shall look into them. The problem is that the parties whose additional support you need have not changed their stance to the left, the TDP, the JDS, the AIA, DMK and the BJD from the start to the finish are repeatedly and publicly saying they won't support you. So I come back to my question. What on the 16th of May can you offer them to overcome their disinclination? What can you do to entice them? Well, in 2004, did the left front ever say that they will support the Congress government? The left front didn't fight that election promising not to support Congress under any circumstances. This time around, the left front have fought an election no, saying that. No, in again, fact, again, your again, colleagues again, are saying they'll come around to us. Karat repeatedly says, again, Karat, not on your life. Karat is not left front. 
There are other people also. Karat might well be the, the single most important leader. The well, left you, front may, has. you may think so, but let's see what happens right. after the 16th of Jaya Lalitha Christmas. isn't offering you any hope. Chandra Babu Naidu isn't offering you well, any hope. Deva Gowda isn't offering you hope. Veen Patnaik isn't offering you hope. Where's the hope? Karan, just wait for the 16th of May. And if we don't form a government, so heavens will not fall. Heavens will not fall if Congress doesn't form a government. Yes. That's the message you're sending out. I'm not sending it out, but what I'm saying is that we are a mature political group, a mature political party, which is more concerned about the well-being of the nation, well-being of the people. And we have gone to the people to vote us into power. If we don't get into a power, then what is the, we have, we as a responsible political party, we, will, we are prepared to sit in the opposition. This sounds very much like the voice of resignation. This sounds like acceptance that you're not going to win. Are you suddenly expressing a reality that you've begun you to are, sense? You are again making, a, a, you're interpreting my this statement. I've said we are certainly forming the government, but if in any eventuality we are not able to do so, we will uh, act as responsible as possible and sit in the opposition. Mr. Divijay Singh, you're just 60% through this election. Two major rounds are still to be held. No political party at this point is prepared to concede the possibility it won't form a government. You're going further. You're saying the heavens won't fall if we don't form a government. I put it to you. Is this realization that in fact no. you're going to lose? No. We are coming back with a higher number, better majority than what we had. That sounds such a contradiction compared to what you said a moment ago. What did, I never said that. Heavens won't fall if we don't form a government. You see, this, this, is, this is what I've said, that this is a political reality. But the point is, I'm trying to make is, today I can tell you, uh, Karan, that we are going to fare much better than what we did in 2004. You said it's a political reality. Let's talk about another political reality. If you're going to have even a fighting chance of forming a government, then you're going to have to find clever ways of bringing people on your side, people who are committed not to support you. Let me put two things to you that you could do and ask you if you're prepared to do them. First of all, are you prepared to set aside Dr. Manmohan Singh and find another prime ministerial candidate so that the left and the third front might be willing to support that new individual? No. No. You're saying no now, but is it not an option that you could consider on the 16th? Well, I'm not uh, empowered to say that. Ah, you're not empowered to say it, but it remains a possibility then, surely. I'm not empowered to say that. But it remains a possibility. I, let me put it, it another way. Which would be your option? To stick by Manmohan Singh and fail to form a government, or change Manmohan Singh for another prime ministerial candidate and succeed in forming government? Well, Karan, this is totally hypothetical. Absolutely. The Congress stand is simple and quite clear. Dr. Manmohan Singh is our Prime Minister candidate. Until such time as you have to drop him, presumably. What's more this, important, this Manmohan this, Singh or this government? May, this may be your assessment. What's more, ah, but again, it's a logical assessment, isn't it? Yeah, you may call it logical. You're not saying it's illogical. <laughs> now, let's go ahead. Okay, the second thing. Are you prepared today to say that you will share the four top portfolios in government, I'm talking about defense, foreign affairs, home and finance, with your allies, something you didn't do in 2004, but you're prepared to do now as a way of bringing them on board. It's too early to talk all these things. It's too early. Let's wait for the 16th of May. But once again, you're not ruling it out. Let's wait for the 16th of May. But if on the 16th of May you are required to share the top four portfolios as a condition for forming a government again, that's something you could consider. Well, I'm again, uh, I want to repeat that I'm really not empowered. This decision has to be taken by the Working Committee and the Congress President. Absolutely. And once again, you've suggested, therefore, it's not ruled out. It may not be in your prerogative to take, but it's not ruled out. Well, I can't say that because ultimately it is the Working Committee and the Congress President who has to decide on these sensitive issues. My last question. Give me a quick answer. Which do you prefer, to sit in opposition or to form a government? Naturally, form the government. And therefore, if it takes changing the prime ministerial candidate, you'll do it. Again, today, Dr. Manmohan Singh is our prime ministerial candidate. But the emphasis was on the word today. A pleasure talking Thank to you, you. Mr. Dikvijay Singh.